to hear a little bit about uh, a last lecture, right, mine. Um, hopefully it's not approaching too soon, the other end, but, you know, life sort of goes up and down, and it has a circle that's all around it. You know, you're, you're either going to end up there or you're going to end up here. That's the up and down part. And then you have all of the things that encircle your life throughout the time that you're living on Earth. And one of the things that um, we'll be looking at this evening are things that are very close to my heart. Um, and things that in all probability that uh, will continue with me after I'm here on Earth. Um, and those, of course, are family and God and liberty and happiness. Those qualities that I consider to be very important. And if I were to add any other things to go along with that, the three things that I would add, which are of great importance in my life today, and have been very instrumental in helping produce my livelihood, would be cultures and technology and languages. And that's what we're going to talk about this evening, if I can get the button pushed. Those three little items that are there. <clears throat> All right. So the title that I've selected for this evening is Language and Logic with a Smattering of Technology. And incorporated in that, of course, is going to be a little bit of a culture, because culture is very much a part of our lives as, as we know it today. Language comes from culture. Culture comes from language. And technology, there's a smattering of that in everything that we do, no matter when it began, you know, be it hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, depending on what you think about the beginning of time. But those are all important aspects of what life is all about. So, if I can get this to work right. Should I press in show? <laughs> Hold on a base. Oh, let's go back. This is one reason why I never use uh, PowerPoint in class. <laughs> I'm the only technologist in the whole world that doesn't use PowerPoint in class, probably. So you speak a language. I think languages are very important, right? And like I said before, languages encompass so many different areas. Okay, it's a part of our lives. It's communication. It's very important. And we as individuals strive to communicate so that we can live peacefully with one another. Okay? Not to be pacifist or anything like that. I think it's essential that we learn to speak a language that we learn to communicate and therefore, life will be more abundant for all of us, okay? So we won't have any ramifications which are in the negative as it goes along. So you have a special aptitude, hopefully, and that you've already seen the slide after that, a special aptitude for language, right? It's because everybody here does speak a language, right? At least one, do you? Okay. Do you consider your native tongue to be well-spoken, or do you make a lot of grammatical errors when you speak? <laughs> no, your native tongue. So you don't make mistakes in, what's your native tongue, French? No, Spanish. Oh, Spanish. Is that right? Okay. And the rest of you? Chinese. Chinese, and you don't make, you make no mistakes when you speak Chinese? I will make mistakes when I speak Chinese. You will? Can you give us an example of the mistake you're going to make? Hmm, I haven't speak Chinese for a long time. <laughs> so, um, har. Har? Uh, pronunciation. Pronunciation? Uh, mm -hmm. With edge or without edge sometimes. Okay. So in other words, you're talking about the different tones that you have and the difficulty in getting yeah. the tone right. Because if you were to say mother and, and donkey, are, uh, are those very similar? Mother and horse, yeah. Mother and horse, what are they? Um, ma and ma. Hmm? Okay. So there's a difference right there just for the tonalities that you have with the language yeah. and you're learning it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the rest of you don't have any problems with your native tongue? You ever get tongue-tied, Spanish speakers? <laughs> Do you practice in the morning saying butter? <laughs> So you get your R's out? <laughs> That's right. So everybody has an aptitude for language. Uh, at least we like to think that we do. Let's go to the next one. So it's all about aptitude, and we're going to find a little bit about it from each one of you. Let's talk about hidden words. And this is where we're going to begin. Because what we're going to do right now, and I have pencils and I have papers for you, is we're going to take an aptitude test for languages and see exactly how well you're able to learn 
a second, a third, a fourth language. And this is with the understanding that you've already learned your native tongue. And the native tongue that we're using this evening is English. Is that all right? So I want to put these face down. <coughs> then I'm going to tell you what's what. Good. So I guess you can tell that this particular test, which is A, is called hidden words. And what you're going to be doing in this particular test is you're going to have little clues over to one side, and then you have four different possibilities. And being able to generalize, being able to look at what the clues are to determine what the equivalent might be, or the definition of it might be, in the, of the four different choices that you have. So, everybody have a pencil? I happen to have those too. Our pleasure. Please. So now you can turn them over. We'll do this real fast. <coughs> I have to get my answer sheet because I have problems with these. What are you doing? <laughs> You're finding hidden words. You're looking at the four letters or five letters that are on the left side under one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. and you're finding what those have relationship, they're finding the relationship with what is on the right side. On the same line? <coughs> on the same line, yes. I'm sorry? Oh, you figured that out. Oh, okay. Sure. We're testing your aptitude. You want mine? Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody done? No. no, not yet? Okay. Okay, well, let's go look at number one. Hmm. What do you think this one might be? WNTR, sound, anything, sound like something familiar to you? Winter. Winter, good. So it's going to be a what? Season. A season, okay. For number two, what do you have there? Not dirty. Not dirty because the word over there to the left is? Clean. clean. okay. Unless you come from Univista where I live and they pronounce it clan. And it might be a group of people if you come from BV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's fact. Okay. But that's the way we talk over there, some of us. Number three, what do you have for that one? Pencil. Pencil, which is a? Used for writing. Very good. Okay, what about the last one? A snack? Or what? Reptile, because it's a snake. <laughs> oh, because it's, it's food? <laughs> oh, you, you thought it was a snack? <laughs> Well, that's close. What's the answer? The answer to that one is what? Reptile, right? Because it's, it's snake. Very good. Okay, now let's do one more. We're just starting. Oops, sorry. Wrong stack. I wonder why that looked funny. Right. Oh, it's exactly the same thing. You just keep that. Okay. Keep it for a souvenir. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay, on this particular one, let's see how well you understand grammar structures. Everybody studied the grammar, right? And what are you looking at? You see that in one of the sentences, in each one of the sentences, you have a word which is in all capitals. Okay? And what you're going to look for is usage in the sentence which is below. In other words, fish in the first sentence is used as a what, and it's going to be in the second sentence a word that's going to be used in exactly the same way, and so on, all the way down the line. More or less.
you can circle, underline the word that you think <coughs> is very similar in use in the sentence which is under a numbered sentence. Okay, we about there? So, sentence number one. Yesterday, Mary caught a fish at the lake. In the next sentence, what word plays the same role? Cake. Cake. Very good. And number two, Amy sang a pretty song to her class. Next sentence, throws. Same usage as sang. Number three, Peter got an orange cat for his birthday. Equivalent of orange in usage? Big. Big. Very good. You guys are so smart. <laughs> Number four, the furry dog barked at us as we walked by. Dog? John. 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 Okay. Very good. Anybody have any problems with those? Mark your mistakes, please. I trust you to be honest with that. Otra vez. Now let's something a little bit more difficult. Everybody studied music? No? There was Never studied piano. You sang in the church choir, wherever, you know, on Broadway. No, no, nothing like that. Okay. On this particular one, you're going to be looking for rhymes. Let's see, similarities in sound. All right. But don't look yet. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, everybody, you all understand what a rhyme is? Okay. No problem with that? All right, let's go. So of course you're gonna rhyme the word with the first word which is in all caps to the left. Look for a word in the line that could stand as that possibility. Of course, you realize that pronunciation is sometimes regional. <laughs> I won't make any more comments about where I live. <laughs> or where I came from, actually. Okay. Everyone done? Number one, time. What do we have? What rhymes with time? Dime. Dime. Very good. I'm impressed. <laughs> what about the very first one on that one? Time. <laughs> Number two, rain. What do we have for that? Cane. Cane. Very good. And number three. Number three? Feet. Which one is it? Feet? Is that what I heard? Feet. Feet? Okay, somebody else have another answer? Keep. Keep. That's right. Because phonetically they're pronounced exactly the same. If you go to the dictionary and you look, you see the little I and two little dots afterwards, and you know that's a E sound. Keep, feet, meet, etc. Okay, number four. Root. Which word? Fruit. Fruit. Everybody agree with that? Okay. I'm impressed. All right. Now, let's go to something a little bit different blank screen, that's the best part. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to practice your true language aptitude. That's basically a test of your grammar and your abilities in that regard. 
And now we're going to go into something a little bit more different. Where I'm going to supply you with certain words that you've probably never used in the same context as you're going to hear that they're going to be used for. All right? For example, if I go number learning, and we'll take the first one, if I can get it to come up. There we go. Ba means one. Okay? Anybody have a problem with that? Don't take notes. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Baba. What does that mean? Two. Two. Okay. You know the Beach Boys? Did they have a song that started like that? Ba, ba, ba. That's right. Barbara Ann? <laughs> All right. One more. D. So here we have top one. Ba. Next one. Next one. Ba 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 di, right? Remember that. Okay. What does that mean? One. <laughs> and that means very good. And two. All right. Ba di ba ba. Isn't that impressive? You're laughing at me? <laughs> All right. Now, let's look at something different. We're going to call it um, two-digit numbers. Two means 20, right? And this one, T means 30. Got that? Two and T. Or is it T for two? <laughs> two, T. So examples, two digit, two ba. You know what a two ba is? Okay. It's a 21. And a T ba, everybody pronounce. Two ba. T ba. Ready? Okay, we have a, a quiz that has two different parts. I have to get my questions out. Okay, you have a part one and a part two. One's on top of the other. All right, is that what this thing is? All right. And the first one, what you're going to do first is you're just going to write down exactly what I say. All right, very quickly. All right, are you ready? Number one, and put dashes in between them, right? Tiba. Number two. TD. The third one. Baba. Fourth one. 2D. Now write down the number equivalent for those. Okay, so what answer do you have for number one, Tiba? 31. 31, very good. And for number two? 33. Pardon? 33. 33, okay. And the third one, Baba? Two. two. And the fourth one, 2D? 23. 23, very good. Okay, now we have a second part. What? How many did you miss? Four? <laughs> <laughs> she missed three. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. 
Okay, but let's go on. Uh, second part. Now, this is a little bit different. Um, you can write down the problem, or you don't have to write down the problem. We're going to do some mathematics. <laughs> All right, you can write, take it uh, down in dictation first, and we'll start with that. All right, and then you can write the response afterwards. But you have to write the response in the phonetic version that I give them to you, the new language that you have, and then you can print the C's after that. You can put down what it actually is. Everybody understand? Okay, so <clears throat> number one, T plus ba. T plus ba. Number two, T ba minus ba. T ba minus ba. Number three, ba ba plus ba. Baba ba plus ba. And number four, 2D times ba. 2D plus ba? 2D times ba. Okay, in the new language, what do you have for number one? For the response? T ba. Very good. I'm sorry, Tiba. What is T? I wrote three, that's why I was asking. Oh. <laughs> what is T? 30. 30. And what is Ba? One. One. So Tiba is the answer, and it is? 31. 31. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number two. Can I get the problem first? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> T ba minus ba equals T. T. That's right. T is 30. Okay. And number three, ba ba plus ba? D. D. Which is three. And number four, 2D times ba is 2D which is 23. Okay. So, <clears throat> who missed what? Anybody miss more than two? Yes. Anybody miss more than three? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> but how'd you do on all of them together? How many did you miss on all of them together? Anybody miss more than four or five? On one, two, and three, did you get all of them right? Give me the first and second one. Mm -hmm. No, I'm talking about all of these that we oh, already did. Oh, I see. Test one, two, and three. Seven. But we all have an aptitude for language, right? Yeah. Yeah, we all do. Somewhat. Because otherwise we wouldn't be speaking the language this afternoon or this evening, right? And we have a, a need to communicate. So that puts value to it. And how many of you all studied language before, other than your native tongue? What language? Uh, Latin and Spanish. Latin and Spanish? English. English? English. 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 French. Yeah. I don't know that language. English. <laughs> <laughs> English? <laughs> English? English and Japanese. Okay. Good. Hmm. Very good. So let's do this. Nobody studied German. Nine? But I think that here's what we'll do. Um, have three for Spanish, two that are native, one that's not. So here's what we'll do. So you did well, right? And so you're ready to talk, right? And you have a talent, right? All of you? You have a talent of some sort with language? Yes. You may not know it, but you really do, okay? You're very fortunate that you're able to communicate. Let's go. So let's show it off. 
So what's going to take place now is we will see on the screen a question. And the question will be directed to that individual who has studied that particular language. And that person who has had that language will show us how well they did in the language that they studied. I heard somebody that studied French in here, right? <laughs> so, we have a question that's in French. You can read the question if you want. Et c'est tout. Qu'est-ce que font faire ailleurs? Si oui, parce que les gens, les gens, les gens juste sont successful et ce qui ne ne travaille pas euh, à ce qui ne à ce qui ne travaille bien euh, ne sont pas euh, n'avait pas le succès le succès très bien le succès mm -hmm. succès succès ouais. voilà ok now oh there we go, let's do this one. And? <laughs> so what's the question? Los idiomas son interesantes. Sí, y más? Más por qué? Como el español, like Spanish. <laughs> Good. So we have nobody to study German. Prevented the Netflix. No ambition. So we have Deutsch and we have Verwenden. Verwenden the Netflix, which means do you use Netflix? Warum oder warum nicht? Why or why not? Für mich nicht. Okay. So here we go, one more. Yes. Do you want me to take that off? Is that? This is your target in your diversity star. Do you like to? Do you want me to? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Do you want? Do you like eat sushi? You'd like to eat sushi. So that was an indication right there, huh? Because <laughs> sushi itself. You're speaking Japanese all the time, and you go to the restaurant and you order sushi. That's actually your word in Japanese. Okay. Sushi o taburu no ga suki desu ka. Okay. And the answer was what? Yeah, I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. oh. Why do you like it? Um, oiciness, if I like. Uh, because it's tasty. Because it's tasty. Mm -hmm. And it's part of another culture, isn't it? Um, Can you say that? Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. So it is a part of another culture. So, do you see any value in language study? I guess that's one of the reasons why I'm here, is to promote the importance of language study, because I think it has a very important role in our life today, especially when we're talking about internationalization or globalization, and being able to communicate is what's going to be important. Well, what I was going to do is I was going to show you some of the reasons why I think it's important through experiences that I've had in my life, okay? So don't laugh at some of these things that I have up there, okay? 
and I won't bore you with family movies. I promise that. However, I'll tell you a little bit about experiences that I've had in life. <clears throat> and that's happened, in, you've heard of 1968 in France? The year of the revolution, when students went to the streets and revolted against the government, okay, because of the education system, because of the establishment was horrible, because of all of these different reasons. Okay, it just so happens that I was there during that period of time. And it also happened because I already spoke French a little bit, because I was doing undergraduate work. And I had a friend whose father was the tailor, or his grandfather who was the tailor for de Gaulle. Okay, I was privileged to be able to attend the 4th of July celebration on the Champs-Élysées in a nice little area, being able to sit and watch it, okay, through formal invitation. But that's only because I was able to speak the language, that I had that opportunity when I was studying in the graduate. Many years ago, right? I'm only 26, but it's been a rough life. <laughs> and then we talk about this aspect, and this one, and this one. As soon as I graduated from school, what did I do? I went into the military, okay? Because I went through five years of ROTC. I was one of those that took five years to graduate, so I just kept going to Army, okay? Sort of like my son and what he did while he was here at w &L. Anyway, I had experiences because I was able to speak one of the languages, French, and work with individuals. And you'll look in this particular photo that you have here, and this is where I was doing some training for individuals in the town of Ho Chi Minh, or the city of Saigon, as it was known at that particular period of time. And these are all officers that were from Laos and Cambodia and Vietnam, okay? Train, training them in my particular military specialty. And it was through French language that I worked that. Then when I went to the Delta in the south part, I had the joy of being able to work with other officers. The guy in the blue is from Cambodia and the other one there is from Laos. And then the three of us on the in and the green uh, were all U.S., okay? Uh, we didn't have to work on our tans. You know, it just came naturally with all the sun. <laughs> no. But because I spoke Vietnamese language, because I'd gone to Vietnamese language school before I went over to the Defense Language Institute, I was able to communicate directly with the people there and go out and scavenge and get to know the people and be a part of their society and their culture. So what I'm getting at is the experiences that I've had have not been that of just traveling. It's actually living in the environment for long periods of time and getting to know society as it really is. And one of the most exciting parts was on Sunday afternoons going water skiing down the Mekong. One of those kooky things that you're not supposed to be doing. You know, and if you notice behind me over here to the, to the right, what is there? There's a grass shack up on stilts in the water. But the river was lined with that. And I think about it now that I was wearing red, as Eddie pointed out, wearing red. And I was the perfect target for anybody that was in one of the little shanty houses along the, along the riverside. But because of my youth, I guess, during that period of time, I never, I never thought about things like that. It was just an exciting thing to do. And then after that, we moved over to Germany. I was married by this time and got to know friends. Okay, these are the Stumpfs who live in Kaiserslautern. And it was through my German language that I was able to continue some of the specialties that I had acquired when I was in the military service. And the friendship developed over a period of time and we still communicate and share stories and all this on a daily basis. There we go. And then we left Germany and we moved to France. And I was working with the Academy de Lille on the northern part and going to the university there while I was there. And got to know a very, very nice family in the northern part of France, in Bayou, which is south of uh, the Belgian border in the northern part of France, close to Calais. And had the opportunity on f many, many weekends to go and spend the weekends with them and their families, okay? the two of us, under their clutches. And it just so happens that this is the area where Jules Verne was, was reared. Okay? And as a result, they have a special balloon festival every year. And on numerous occasions, we were there and were able to participate in that. To prove that it was France, there's the flag that's over with the balloon. I'm not up there, I was underneath it. I was too chicken to go up. <laughs> Let's go on. And this, um, because a little bit of Spanish that I was able to speak, and because I was working in a North African country for a period of time, for about five years total. 
I was able to um, travel quite a bit, but I traveled as a result of the occupation that I had. And the occupation I had was because of the languages that I had. And what I did here, this is the port in Palma de Mallorca, in the islands of Ibiza. And I was in human resources and personnel. And in doing that with languages, I was able to go and arrange travel for the expatriates who were living in North Africa. And so I would check out the various hotels, you know, go to the Hilton, go to this place and this place. And everything was always an adventure for us. And our hotel was right in front of this area there in the Palma. <laughs> there we go. And of course, that's my wife at that period of time. I think she's better looking now. <laughs> no, it's nice. And uh, this particular company that I was working with was in Algeria, okay? And this just so happens to be a part of a wedding celebration for the woman who was there wearing her dowry, okay? Notice that everything are, this is all 24 karat, and these are all saltwater pearls. Mm -hmm. But that's everything that she possessed as far as wealth. And that's part of the tradition, part of the ceremony for the marriage in that particular Arab culture. But I was fortunate enough to work with her, to work with other people that you see there. Because the lady who was there to the right, who was expressing openness with her hands after preparing couscous for us, for the guests that were at the party, she was also the cleaning lady in the office area where I was working and for the El Paso Corporation. So it was very nice. And these are just some of the children that were there. But there were very festive times. But everything, when I go back and think about it, it's because I was able to develop certain talents, because I had been given certain talents, and because I had already studied the languages. And the languages were the key to getting where I wanted to go. And this is uh, our daughter of a couple years back. <laughs> and of course, she loved Mickey Mouse. And Mickey Mouse apparently loved Paris as well. I mean, the, the students that I've had know the little story behind this, but this is our daughter Angelica. And this is before we went up on the Eiffel Tower. I was running an American school in Grenoble. We took a weekend and went up to, to Paris. And um, notice the construction that was taking place during that period of time. All right? That's to say the elevator was non-operational, so we had to take the stairs to go up at least to the first level. All right? And all there were was the open stairs with little chicken wire around the edge. We got up to the top, and Angelica decided that she wanted to come down, <laughs> OK, without her parents. <clears throat> so she did. She made it down to the bottom before we did, but we didn't go to the playground afterwards. <laughs> but she, had a, she was speaking a beautiful French and screaming. <laughs> screaming holy terror, you know, and letting all the neighbors know that uh, she was mistreated by her parents. <laughs> all the while in French, okay? And no, I didn't speak Chinese, but I always wanted to learn to speak Chinese, okay? But because there's very much similarity between Vietnamese and Chinese, I know a few things like ni hao, yeah. okay? And this is from one of my trips to China when I was speaking at a, a conference which was there for the opening of China Yellow River Television. Okay, I was there for its dedication, right? And this guy is the president of the corporation, the president of the cover of the TV thing. And there we are at Tiananmen Square, and there's just some other individuals who are in Beijing. But it was because of my technology, inquisitiveness concerning the culture, and interest in language, that I was able to go to that and be very, very fortunate as far as I'm concerned. Okay, sorry about this. A little bit later, went to England, and I didn't speak their English, but I learned to speak their English. And most people thought that we were British by the time we came back. <laughs> Just threw that in for the heck of it. If you want to hear me speak a, a Cockney accent sometimes. And then, of course, the kids who went to study in Spain, okay, to perfect their Spanish. through it, the program that we have here, Estudios de Pere, and Angelica received her undergraduate degree, but it's because of the Languages Association and the associations that I had made that my kids were able to do that. Right. 
And then the last one here. Uh, two kids at home, and the guy in the middle is called Guigier, Guillermo Cardone, who comes to La Plata in Argentina. And our family was his family for the year plus that he was here. And as a result of being able to communicate with him, because he was not very strong in English, we had a good time as families and still talk with him. And waiting for our next invitation to go back down to Argentina. Right? So, anyway. So, these things are important to me. I indicated so at the beginning. There's one more there. Family, God, life, and liberty. All right? Essential for a good existence as far as I'm concerned. And you put that with cultures, languages, and technology. And in my particular opinion, you're going to end up with happiness and self-fulfillment. And I've been able to do that only because of my desire to study language, because I realize its importance in being able to communicate with the run around me. And because of languages, I'm here at WNL. Okay? I didn't come here necessarily because of my technology. Okay? I'm a self-made technologist, because my degrees are in language. Okay? But it's been a joy to have the opportunity to do it. And I encourage all of you all, you know, when you go out and you look in the real world, and you have to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life, all of us, right? <laughs> that you try to realize the importance of language, okay? And culture, and put all these things together. And I think that in the end, you will not be unhappy with what you've been able to accomplish. Because it's, uh, it's an integral part of time, an integral part of life, and with it, um, there's a lot of this that you'll be able to have. So. That's it. Just wanted to share with you all of these different things. So, except I can't pronounce the last one there. What does it say? Aligato. 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 Thank you. Can anybody say that? Aligato. Aligato. You studied Japanese? Yeah. Oh, you did? No. no. <laughs> Very good. So I had to get credit where credit's due also. I did not create those questions that you thought were so stupid about your <laughs> aptitude test. <laughs> and I'd like to personally thank this particular corporation that I found on the web. The website is there if you want to go and try some more particular ones. Okay? Thanks for coming. Appreciate it.